In this video, we will go over how to use the programming language Perl to generate random values and manipulate those values. WebAssign's use of Perl is minimal, and it is mostly used for storing numerical values and performing basic mathematical operations on those values. We will begin with the question that we created in the last video, where we learn how to create a numerical question. We call Perl using this EQN tag. Anything that is contained within this tag will use the programming language Perl. Let's start by giving Perl some operations to perform. The operations we'll have Perl perform are just numbers, and you can see that we separate operations within an EQN tag using a semicolon. We call this use of a semicolon a delimiter. This is similar to when you're trying to send an email to multiple recipients and you separate their addresses by a comma. The EQN tag will always display the last operation you ask it to perform. If we click Test Preview, we will see that Perl is displaying the last operation we asked it to perform, which was the number 9. Another method of formatting operations in Perl is to use a string. Each of the operations we have currently given Perl are numerical values defined by a single character. A string is a collection of characters that form a single object or operation within Perl. To create a string, you surround the collection of characters with single quotation or apostrophe marks. Let's change the last three operations into strings. Now when we preview the question, we see that it is still displaying the last operation we gave Perl which is the string of letters spelling the word 9. The contents of the EQN tag will usually contain information related to the calculation of the answers to a question, and you will often want to hide that information from the student. Let's look at how to hide the output of the last operation from an EQN tag now. I'm going to remove the contents of the last string in this EQN tag. This string is now what we call an empty string, or a null string, and it is simply two single quotes. If we preview the question now, we will see that the EQN tag will still display the contents of the last string we asked it perform, which is now nothing. Ending your EQN tags with an empty string will hide the contents of the EQN tag from the student. This invocation of Perl only uses a single EQN tag. You can also invoke Perl using two tags, one to open and the other to close. As before, anything contained between these two tags will use the programming language Perl. The benefit of using the opening and closing tags is that it allows you to utilize the vertical space within the question editor. This allows you to place each of your Perl operations on a single line, making the code much easier to read. One of the primary uses of Perl at WebAssign is to store values in Perl variables, manipulate those values, and recalling the values that you've stored in the Perl variables later. You can create a Perl variable by typing a dollar sign inside of an EQN tag, followed by any string of letters and numbers. Here I've created a Perl variable a, or $a, and I'm going to assign the value of 5 to this variable and end the operation with a semicolon. When I preview the question now, we'll see that the 5 is being displayed because it is the last operation I asked Perl to perform. If we end our EQN tag in an empty string, the displayed number no longer appears when we preview the question. Now that I've stored a value as a Perl variable, I can reference that Perl variable to display that value. We refer to this as calling the Perl variable. You can call the variable by placing the variable in a simple EQN tag, like this. When we preview the question, you can see that not much has changed because we've replaced the static number 5 with the Perl variable whose value is also 5. But now when we change the value assigned to the Perl variable $a, 
we see that it is reflected in the preview of the question. Let's assign the other values in this question to Perl variables. And now let's call those Perl variables in the appropriate places in the question statement. When we preview the question now, we see that not much has changed. When I change one or more of the Perl variables, the displayed values also change, but the answer does not because it is still a static number that is not coded in Perl. Let's calculate the answer to this question from the Perl variables that we've defined. I called this Perl variable $ANS to stand for answer. Based on the Perl variables that we have defined, we will have A times B plus C times D. The multiplication operator in Perl is the asterisk, and the addition operator is simply a plus sign. Now let's call this variable in the answer field and preview the question. Now when we change the value of one of the Perl variables, we see that the answer has changed accordingly. Now that we have all of the values assigned to Perl variables, we can easily change them from static values to random values. To generate a random value in Perl, we use a special function called randnum. Randnum contains three arguments constrained by parentheses. The first argument is a minimum value, the second is a maximum value, and the third is the count. Another way to think of this is that you are asking random to count from one number to another number and count by a particular value. For this example, I want random to go from 1 to 4 and count by 1. This random function will now return 1, 2, 3, or 4. If we preview the question, we will see a random number for the first value of our expression, and clicking Show New Randomization will cause the question to choose a new random value. Let's replace all of the values from our expression with random values. We now have the first value going from 1 to 4, the next from 5 to 9, the third from 1 to 4, and the fourth value from 5 to 9. And now when we preview the question, we see a fully randomized question with an answer key that algorithmically matches the displayed values.